Now, parents could be fined up to £160 for their children's unauthorised absences under new government regulations to combat truancy. Well, we're now joined by Schools Minister Damien Hines. Very good morning to you, Mr Hines. Uh, so tell us a bit more about these plans to improve attendance in schools. Well, you mentioned the, 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 the changes in fixed penalty notices and making those consistent across the country, how they are deployed. That's one of half a dozen different things that we are doing today. We're halfway through the school year. It's a good time to take stock uh, and refresh and go further with what we've been doing on attendance. Ever since COVID, school attendance has been down somewhat. Actually, it's improving again now with, through the great work of, of schools and, and others. But we do need to go further and make sure that we get right back to those levels of school attendance that we were having habitually uh, before the pandemic. Attendance had improved a great deal, actually, between 2010 and the, and the onset of COVID. And we need to get back to those, those kinds of levels because being in school is so important for so many reasons. These fines, uh, they're going up from 60 to 80 pounds, so up by 20 pounds if they're paid within 21 days, and then they're going up by 40 pounds from 120 to 160 pounds if they're paid in 28 days. Now, this sounds like quite a punishment-based approach, and I'm wondering if, if that's the right way to, to do it, to punish people, because some people have very important reasons for, for missing school. It's not just because, you know, they're skipping it and having a laugh. There are some serious mental health issues going on amongst children since the pandemic. So just to, to, to be clear, the fines, aren't, fines are not about that. Uh, the fixed penalty notices are only for unauthorised absence and only over a certain threshold. It's not about being off, of course, being off school with uh, with, with, with sickness. As I say, it's, it's one of a number of different things that we are, that we are doing today. But ju just to be clear, the I mean, you talk about it being a punishment approach. I mean, the fines are there to be a deterrent, of course. That's what, that's what penalties are for. The, num the, the amount hasn't gone up, actually, for over 10 years. It's been £60 since 2012. It's going to go up from £60 to £80 pounds if you pay it promptly, and then both the £60 or the £80 double if you don't pay within 21 days. That, that as you know, is a common sort of approach uh, with fines. But it's meant to be a deterrent. We don't really want people paying these fines at all. We want children to be in school. As I say, it's only, this is only for unauthorised absence only over a certain threshold we talk about if you've had unauthorized absence of 10 sessions or more in a 10-week period a session is half a day so so effectively one whole week uh, in in 10 of unauthorized absence that is when these fixed penalty notices would be would be considered do you think it is enough of a deterrent, though? Because I have spoken to a, to a number of parents uh, recently who, who talk about the cost of living, and they say the only way that their children can get a holiday in a year is if they take them out during term time. And they also talk about the pandemic, and they say that not having their children in school every single day has changed the way that they perceive absence at schools. They don't see having their children in school every single day as imperative. Is that something that you've noticed? And do you think this will be enough of a deterrent to stop that? Look, it, so it is correct that for, for some families, not for everybody, but for some families, there have been those changes of, of perception. And as I say, what we're doing on the fixed penalty notice is for you know, extended unauthorised absence. That's only one of the things that we are talking about today, one of the things we're working on. Actually, we talk about a support first approach. You know, schools work with families to get children's attendance uh, up, having sensitive conversations if there are particular you know, issues around a child's special needs or perhaps um, some anxiety or something like that. And schools do brilliant work uh, in this area. None of that is to do with is to do with fines. The fines are when you have, an, uh, as I say, an extended unauthorised absence. I do think it's important that we have that uh, that, that we have that there as, as a deterrent because it is really important being in school. I, you know, I hear what you say about some say, oh, well, COVID made us think, well, maybe it's not as important to be in every day. It is. There is an absolutely a discernible effect on how children do at school, you know, what they attain uh, and so on, um, we're, even with relatively small amounts of, uh, of absence. And then, of course, there's not being with your friends and taking part in the sport at school and all the extracurricular activities and all the other things that school involves. So, of course, every child at some point is going to be off school sick. That happens to any child during the course of their schooling. But it's, it's this avoidable absence that we really, really want to work on and get our message out there that if you can be in school, absolutely you should be. And just before we, we let you go, Mr Hines, I did want to talk to you about the issue of, of MPs' safety very much in the spotlight this week. Have you ever felt 
unsafe at work. And do you welcome this £31 million package in order to protect MPs in this election year? Well, I think what it's really important to protect our democracy. That's not just members of parliament, of course, but it includes members of parliament. We have a representative democracy and it's really important that that can go about its business, that individuals can go about their business and, by the way, their staff members and families uh, without fear. So I do think it's right that uh, there is this there is this focus. The police obviously do fantastic work and we're all we're all very grateful uh, to them. And yes, I do welcome that that that, that focus that the prime minister has brought to protecting our, our, our democracy, our democracy democratic process and democratic participation. And you're, you're standing uh, in Westminster now. Should people be able to protest in that area outside uh, the seat of democracy? Look, people do, can and do protest uh, regularly and having, having protest is a part of, it's part of a free society, it's part of a, it's part of a, a democracy. There, there are always questions in a free society about how you, how you balance that right to protest, that right to be heard with other people's rights to go about their daily business and also, of course, making sure that it doesn't become overwhelming uh, to, uh, to people, it doesn't become intimidatory uh, to people as well. The, the, those, the, the police are operationally independent, quite rightly so. It's a great strength of our country. But, but th these are some of the questions that, that, that have, to be, have to be grappled with. Is, is Rishi Sunak right when he says there's a growing consensus that mob rule is replacing democratic rule? I mean, that's a very strong statement to make. Look, he's absolutely right uh, to say that uh, to say that yes, that there are people who, who who try to bring to bear this sort of intimidatory approach, including on elected representatives, but not only. And obviously, as a free society that you know, we value very much our liberal democracy, we can't allow that. We can't allow that to happen. As I say, look, the poli police rightly are, are, in, are operationally independent. But these, these are some of the decisions that, that, that you know, do have to be made in terms of, of getting that balance right. Yes, there must be a right to protest and there is a right to protest. It, it does draw on an awful lot of policing resource uh, to do that. But we also need to make sure that we don't get to a situation. And obviously we have seen in Parliament just in the last... Uh, in the last week or so, um, uh, some of the some of the manifestation of wh when we start to talk about uh, fear fear of threat, fear fear, fear of uh, of action taken against individuals in the democratic system itself uh, having an effect on that democratic system, and, and we cannot have that because we are a representative liberal democracy. We must be able to have debate and to and to be able to to vote uh, in that system, which is what we've been elected by people to do. Okay, Damien Hines, really good to see you this morning. Thank you so much for your time.